This is the Unit 2 Focus Session written by Ms Newbury. So, Year 11, today is the day you've got to go and show off all your knowledge on Unit 2. Remember, answer all the questions. You have to attempt all of them and you must make sure you get your timings right. Have a go at them, even if you are not sure, because you cannot lose marks. And it is far easier to pick up the first few marks on each question than to gain full marks on them. So, if a question asks how Hitler came to power and you're struggling, think generally. How, how does anybody come to power? You know, they win votes, they have good ideas, they publicise their ideas. Think generally, because those general ideas will pick you up some marks. My advice would be to start with question three, the last question, the one that's worth 16 marks plus another four for spelling and grammar. And that way you won't run out of time to answer it, but you should spend a maximum of 25 minutes on it. Remember, you have been taught everything, therefore just think through the topics to work out what is relevant to the question. Now we're going to focus on the question types for this first video. So your first question will be a source and it will ask you what can you learn from source A about you know, something from the syllabus. And this is all about making an inference. So an inference is something it doesn't directly say or show but suggests to you, something you can infer. You must not use the wording from the source to make an inference. That means you're copying the source. So our sentence starters, source A suggests that, I know this because it says, okay, and then put a direct quotation on the end. So you make your inference and you back it up with a quote from the source itself. You need one done well. If you've got time, try and find two inferences. Question 1B, we'll start describe the... And whatever it's asking for, and it might use the phrase key features, you've got to describe two things that you know about the topic or the event. So your structure is, one key feature is, for example. A second key feature is, for example. And you've got to support each of your ideas with factual details. Read the wording of the question very carefully. So, for example, if it were to say, describe the measures taken by the Treaty of Versailles to limit German power, don't just talk about the Treaty of Versailles, talk about those which limited German power and use the wording from the question. So, if it doesn't use key features, use the word that it does use. So, in this last example, measure. So, one measure is, for example. Question 1C will be, explain the effects of... Don't describe the event in the question. Focus on the effects of that event, the consequences. What did it cause to happen next? Okay, you must give two effects. It will probably help you to think about what life was like before to fully explain the impact of the effect. So you've got to explain the importance of the effect. You could try to show how the effects link together. So we need one effect was, for example, this was important or terrible or successful or effective because, and it's that because that's going to get you into the top level for the marks. Or you can try a different approach and say this effect happened because. It depends on the nature of the question. For 1D, you're going to be asked to explain why. So this means you've got to identify reasons why the event or the decision happened. Again, you need two reasons why the event happened and you need an explanation. You could try to show how the reasons are linked or why one is more important than the others at the end of your answer. So the structure, one reason why, for example, this is important because... Question 2a, explain how, and you'll get a choice, either 2a or 2b. So you've got to use your knowledge to identify how something happened and not why. 
you're usually expe expected to explain how something changed or developed. <clears throat> And you've got to explain everything you identify. And again, two ways. So 1C, 1D and 2A or 2B is always two examples that are explained. Okay, you've got to look carefully about the wording in the question because everything you write must be linked to that. So one way or one change is, for example, and it's really important that you provide a comparison to what it was like before and what changed. And then this change, if it uses the word change in the question, was important or helped or had an impact or was bad because, right? And then you could try to show how the changes are linked or which one is the most important. Now for questions 1C, 1D, 2A or 2B, the links or the most important can get you the eighth mark. But if you do two explained examples, you can also score eight. And your final one, your essay one, the one I suggested you started with first, okay, you're going to be asked quite likely whether something was more important than other things. You will be given two reasons to cover, and there'll be two bullet points. I suggest you use those two bullet points and then you have to include at least one idea of your own. You have to cover three reasons if you want to be able to get up towards the top end of the mark scheme. So keep using the wording in the question to keep you focused. You're not just describing the events, you're linking them back to the question and trying to come up with an argument. So you are arguing your opinion. Is that the most important reason why Stresemann solved the problems? Why Hitler came to power? Why Hitler was able to turn Germany from a democracy to a dictatorship? If it is, argue your point. If it's not, provide an alternative. And then in your conclusion, You've got to show which reason you think is the most important and why by comparing it to the other reasons. And for full marks, you show how those reasons are linked together.